Welcome to my YouTube channel. I got Chris Campbell. The franchisee at Keegley here in Atlanta, Georgia. What's cracking, bro? What is going Good on, Good to man. see more and more of you. He is on YouTube, guys, so make sure you go to his YouTube channel. It's also in the description. But before you do that, Chris, tell us how things are going out here, man. Whew. I mean, I'm not going to lie. This month was amazingly better than than a month before last. Yes. So, <laughs> so we're, yes. we're currently in September now. So right. said yes. August was challenging. And why was it challenging? August was challenging because there was a huge gap between what sellers thought their house was worth and what investors knew their house would be worth by the time they get finished flipping it. Right. It's the whole purple sky conversation. We literally just had a conversation about this where Jamil told a story and an, an analogy. Tell us that story. So it's interesting, right? If I walked out of my house in the morning and I said, and I looked up at the sky and I saw that the sky was purple today and it was just shocking to me. And my neighbor came out and we stood outside in front of, on, in front of our houses and we looked up at the skies together and I said, it's a purple sky? It's like, yeah, it's a purple sky. We agree it's a purple sky. Yes. If I went back into my house and I said, you guys wouldn't believe it, but it's a purple sky outside. Nobody would believe it because until you see it, you don't know it, right? right? And that's why I think right now, especially in changing times, the people who know that the sky is purple are real estate professionals, which is why going to real estate agents and having conversations with agents rather than sellers directly might be a little bit of a hack there to try to get you into that pricing uh, scenario a little faster. But anyhow, you made it past August. Yep. Here we are in September. You guys have basically had sellers having a hard time negotiating with wholesalers or investors, right. or even real estate agents, and the sellers haven't caught up with what the market is actually doing. Right. And so a lot of your acquisitions has slowed, slowed down in August. Is that what you were saying? Yeah, yeah, we had a big dip. Um, and then we, I mean, we just rallied the troops. We just said, we all went, we kind of ignored some of the stuff we were doing like on the business and we got back in the business yeah. and we, we just focused on sales. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys have changed in terms of how you're evaluating and what numbers you're going into properties at right now with the shift? Yeah. So we're taking about a 15% um, reduction on an ARV that was say six months ago. So if so, a house, you see a house across the street for 300,000, you go, well, our fix and flipper needs to look at that as 15% less, so 45 grand less. So that's a $255,000 deal rather than a 300. To which, be safe. To be and safe. And you might sell it for 285, and that's right. great, but I wouldn't plan on selling it for 285 because then you might end up getting stuck with a house and end up in what'd you call it? I call it a flur. Yeah. Uh, 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 it's a flur. Uh, it's, a fail, it's a failed burr. Yeah. <laughs> so a flip that became a burr? A flip yeah. that became a burr. Hilarious. I got, I got one of those right now and a second one potentially. I've got Wow. Four I think the second those. one will sell. You're but flourishing. yeah. We're I'm flourishing. flourishing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. It was it's been tough because you go down to the end like we had a deal and this is probably similar to yours. Renovation costs were a little bit higher, permits took a little bit longer, mm -hmm. hard money costs were more, yep. and we get down to the end and a house that we thought was 500 now we've got houses on the same street selling right. for 460 for, right. that are just as nice as ours. And so yeah. I would have to write a check for 25 grand to get rid of the house. Or I go to the, the Fleur method, a failed burr or a fix that turns into a burr, and I hold the property, get the tax benefits, yeah. and that's what you're doing, right? That's exactly what we're doing. We found uh, an amazing lender that actually is still giving a 30 year at 5.5 and 85% LTV. Wow. And we appraised at what our list price is. We'll leave about 50 grand in the deal, um, but it'll it'll we'll make that money back through rental and it'll cash flow. Actually, let's talk about this house since we're yeah. here, Chris. Awesome. So, what's this neighborhood called? This is East Atlanta Village. It's a super cool, um, sort of like artsy, hipster kind of community in in 10 minutes from downtown Atlanta, and we're about one mile from the village itself. So you could get on a bicycle and be there in just a couple minutes. So it's super desirable area, very popular neighborhood. Um, it's one of the reasons why we're taking this house down ourselves to flip it awesome. is because uh, one, it has a really good margin in it. And two, it, um, we think this area is gonna maintain a little bit stronger than some of the more transitional neighborhoods where we're a little bit more hesitant to do a flip in okay, ourselves. Okay, so right where now. did the deal come from? Did you guys d knock the door? Did you guys cold call or did this come from somebody else? This came from a, another wholesaler. So wholesaler finds the opportunity, they talk to the seller, they maybe come yep. call you guys at Keegley and say, 
hey, I've got an opportunity. I don't know what to lock it up at. You guys give them a number, yep. they go back to the homeowner, they get the contract, and then they sell the deal to you. Right. Do you know how much the wholesaler made? Uh, they made 20 grand. 20 grand. Amazing. And there's still a lot grand. of potential here for you to make. Yeah. So walk us through the numbers on this, Chris. Uh, bought it at 352. Okay. We're going to put 120 to 125 in. Okay. Um, so we'll be in after holding cost somewhere right around five. Yes. Um, and uh, I mean, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to be too presumptuous because I don't like to put things out there, but uh, it should sell at or above seven. I wow. It. I believe it. Wow. This looks like an, a gorgeous neighborhood. Like if I was coming to live in Atlanta, I'd want to live where these trees are. I mean, it, Atlanta is a gorgeous city anyways, but like, just look at, listen to this place. It's yeah. peaceful. You got all these gorgeous old growth trees here. This is an established neighborhood. And that's the difference between this and the transitional neighborhood that you're talking about. There's a lot deeper roots for families right. here. Yep. And this house, um, oddly enough, was built by the builder who built the neighborhood and he lived in it. This was a personal residence of the guy wow. who built this house in the 1950s. Wow. So are yeah. we going to do yeah. a tour of it on this property or what do we want to do on this house, on this, in this video? Sure. Or should we do the construction thing, doing a tour of the property? Yeah, I think we do guessing, play a guessing game. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, cool. Okay. Guessing games are fun. Yep. So, Chris, you mentioned that you were going to fix and flip this. Why not wholesale this? C considering the market, where it's going, um, wh why do you feel so confident about actually doing the project and not just, you know, assigning this to another wholesaler right now and making a quick twenty or thirty thousand dollars? We did explore that, yep. and we actually we we put it on the MLS to see if we could wholesale it or wholetail it. Yep. Um, and we didn't really like where the numbers were coming in with that. And we just knew there was a better margin to do it, to do it this way. It also, um, it's, we try to, to plan everything out to where each month we have a certain number of wholesale deals and a certain number of flips. And this gives us some revenue for, you know, this is probably going to be a three month project right. and maybe, you know, 60 days to sell and close. So that's what, um, 150 days from now money awesome also you get to keep your crews busy which i know is something yeah. that people are really desperately trying to do in these transitional times you don't want to lose your key talent because you've taken a short break because the market is kind of doing a weird jig right you want to make sure that you're buying deeper but you're keeping your crews busy this is a hack guys if you're getting into the fix and flip business don't lose your key talent yeah we've actually our phones have been blowing up from subcontractors looking for work Oh, wow. that are like, hey, I'm a painter, I need some work. Hey, I'm a carpenter, I need some work. This is the time to find your best talent because if other people are, are um, constricting, then yeah, if you take some jobs, some extra flips, and you can keep those guys working, now you're gonna retain that key talent when the times get better it, again. It is the bold are rewarded type of situation, right? The people that are sitting in this market and going, like what you talked about earlier, instead of worrying about working on the business. You guys jumped in and worked in the business yep. because you needed to. You need to get into the trenches. You needed yep. to get more focused on sales. And then also because you're doing that, your ears are closer to the pavement and you get to hear all the contractors and the suppliers and everybody saying, hey, we'll lower our prices. We will we'll work with you. We realize that these guys over here didn't have their footing strong enough. And so you're getting an opportunity to hire guys that are probably top tier talent for lower than what you could have a year right. ago. I have a question about the acquisition process because you said this came from a wholesaler and this is traditionally the Keegley model, right? We find right. work with wholesalers, real estate agents, we try to keep our marketing costs to zero. How did this wholesaler find you guys? Was it because of the brand? Did you guys do an outreach to them? Uh, did they come to you? Were they referred from us? How did the relationship find you? Uh, I'm not actually sure where it originally came from, That's um, but we've done answer. we've done repeat business awesome. with this wholesaler. They brought awesome. us numerous deals, and we've sold them. And what I, what um, I love about that is that he's running an actual business, not a he's hobby. not the guy that's there. He's not the guy that's in the middle of that, right? He's yep. looking and over. It's it's like who's the person that's making the sandwich at the subway shop? You don't really necessarily need to worry about that when you own the franchise, right? Right. right, the thing runs by itself. And so that's actually a great answer that he doesn't know that. What's interesting is that Chris has uh, mentioned that they've done multiple deals with this one lead source, right? This is a beautiful example of how relationship-based business modeling will take you, sorry, will take you way beyond what spending money on marketing will ever do, right? Because you don't have to continue to pay through direct mail or anything to get this wholesaler to bring you opportunities. Guys, right. that's a second hack. This is something that if you ever wanted to look at what a Keegley franchise was about, 
we could teach you guys how to do this kind of thing. Chris, is there any other special or significant features about this property that you think that we should highlight? Um, other than just walking through and taking a look and seeing what we might do with it? Let's do it. Huh? Guys, here's what I think we should do. I think we should do a part two of this here at this property and we should do a guessing game instead. And the guessing game is, if you guys watch the next video, hopefully there's an end card or something in there, or maybe there's a link in the description. We can do a video all about having people guess what the renovation is and as we walk through it, Chris talks about what he's gonna do. I think he's gonna do some dormers over the property. He's gonna add some windows. He's gonna do a big old deck, get rid of the wheelchair ramp, all that kind of stuff. Have him tell us the vision of the property and have everybody watching the video make a comment down below of what their closest guess is. Love it. Okay. Let's do it. So, pretty amazing. You wanna take us out? Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, do us a favor and make sure that you subscribe to Chris Campbell's YouTube channel. The link for that is in the description. Chris is sharing everything that he's doing out here in Atlanta. You can learn about his wholesale business, you can learn about his fix and flip business, and you can actually reach out and do business with Chris. Absolutely. All right, guys, thank you so much. Like and subscribe, and also make sure, again, subscribe to Chris's channel. Later. Thanks for watching another one of my YouTube videos. Now it's your turn to go out and take some action. But before you do, like and subscribe to my channel because the law of reciprocity means you owe me.